In today's video, we kick off the beginning of the Central Division's GM report cards. We're going to take a look at the newest team and one of the more interesting ones as well from the offseason, Utah HC. We're going to take a look at the trades, the signings, and the moves all made by GM Bill Armstrong and grade his work coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, today we take a look at the new Utah Hockey Club and take a look at the moves they've made this offseason. Of course, their first full offseason as a franchise coming up on their first, of course, franchise for the regular season uh, coming up here this fall. So Bill Armstrong, we know uh, from the days of being the Arizona Coyotes, the management's all the same. And we saw a very different approach, a very different way of going about doing business. Clearly, the change in ownership uh, injected a lot of uh, new money into the franchise and was able to uh, kind of, you know, cut the strings a little bit and give them more freedom to go out and make some moves and make this team more competitive it finally has a longer term vision longer term stability and that really helped them and they were not shy about getting busy very very quickly going into the 2024 nhl draft where we saw some significant trades a couple of them are really improving their back end so they pick up Mikhail Sergachev from Tampa. Nobody's seen that deal coming. We know we didn't really think that Sergachev was going to be a, a player that was moved. Uh, of course, going into the beginning of a new contract, uh, he's got lots of term and money left on that deal, and he was just about uh, ready for his no trade clause to kick in, and they moved him right beforehand. So going to Utah as Sergachev, going back to Tampa, they traded defenseman JJ Mosher, uh, prospect Connor Geeky, and a 2025 second round pick there's also a conditional seventh rounder in there as well so overall i really like that trade for utah sergachev is a tremendous defenseman uh, he can definitely log you top pair minutes he can play in all situations and he's he's really good he's learned his craft from some of the best including victor hedman there in uh, tampa for a long time has had great coaching um and he's certainly ready to step up and be that team's number one d so all in all i think that was a terrific move Next up, we see Utah again take another defenseman, and they pick up John Marino from New Jersey, right shot D, uh, who we know they were looking to move to free up some money for free agency because they were supposed to be targeting Brett Pesci, which worked out. Uh, Marino, along with pick number 153, goes from New Jersey to Utah for a 2024 uh, pick, which was pick 49, and a second rounder in next year's draft. So essentially, they get a pair of second rounders for Marino and pick 153. So again, for Utah, they had lots of draft capital and they put it to good work. I mean, obviously in the circuit chip trade, you know, giving up on Connor Geeky so early might, you know, not be something that we really thought we saw coming, but they have a lot of young talent and it's quite likely that, you know, they're not all going to be able to be members of this team at the NHL level anyway. And to get a top defenseman like Sergeyev, you do have to give up value. So all in all, they add a couple of top four defensemen, which I think was a tremendous amount of work and a great return packages there for, for Bill Armstrong and uh, Utah Hockey Club. Of course, they also made a trade with Ottawa later in the offseason, uh, sending a young prospect Jan Jenik to the Senators forward to prospect Igor Sokolov. So that was, again, a fine trade for both sides. Both players had been in each organization for a few years, uh, had limited NHL opportunity, and was looking for a fresh start to see if they could uh, progress their career. So that accomplishes that for both sides, and they both get uh, new deals. So signing-wise, internally, uh, we saw some good contracts as well from Bill Armstrong. Uh, they signed Liam O'Brien, Spicy Tuna, as he calls himself, a three-year deal, uh, $1 million. We know O'Brien's going to be a big uh, fan favorite there in Utah. They extended defenseman Michael Kesselring, two years at 1.4. Valamaki gets a two-year deal at $2 million a season. Sean Dersey gets a much more lucrative deal, uh, four, million, or sorry, four years at $6 million per season. So four times six for Dersey. He'll play on the top pair with Sergachev, uh, which should make a really fine duo up there. Of course, you throw in John Marino. Uh, in there, and then of course, you, you know, now you got uh, some big pieces of your top four secured. Uh, Kevin Connaughton re signs as well, two years at league minimum, two way deals. Barrett Hayton, two years at 2.65. Igor Sokolov, after the trade, gets one year, two way contract, league minimum up to NHL. Externally, they bring in Kevin Stenlin on a two year deal for the fourth line at two million bucks a season. Ian Cole gets a one year. $3.1 million free agent contract. And they also bring in Robert Bertuzzo on a one-year two-way deal 
league minimum at the NHL. I think it was 350, if I'm not mistaken, at the AHL. So all in all, um, the signings were were pretty good. I really like the Jersey signing. I think it's more than fair. Uh, otherwise, I don't have really any complaints about the other deals they've made, uh, and mostly for the most part, short term deals and not a ton of money. Uh, Stendlin's had a good run, uh, especially finishing up as a Stanley Cup champion uh, in Florida. Uh, so he'll bring good experience, good fourth line grit, good on faceoffs, decent size, and all that. So. I have no issues with anything they did at the draft. They used their picks wisely. They got Tisha Ginla, uh, who was going to be, you know, a potential franchise star uh, for a Ginla to get to play with. Uh, Shane Doan's son, Josh Doan, a Ginla and Doan, of course, great buddies. Uh, you know, their dads, their whole lives, well, most of their lives, and, you know, got to play together at the lower levels, but never at the NHL. And now they're going to play at the NHL together, which is great. They also picked up Cole Baudouin. They get them both signed to their ELCs, along with guys like Artem Duda, Miko Matica, uh, Julian Lutz, Noah Nord, and Sam Limkin also signed ELCs this offseason. So to summarize their team with the additions and some tractions, coming in, you've got Mikhail Sergachev, John Marino, Kevin Stenlin, Ian Cole, Robert Bertuzzo. Going out, J.J. Mosher, Connor Geeky, Jason Zucker's not returned, Josh Brown's not back, Jan Jennings not back, and Travis Dermott. So in all honesty, this team was greatly improved in my opinion. The forward group is not drastically different. I mean, Zucker is not back, um, but for the most part, you know, you have the same, largely the same group. A guy like Josh Stone should be able to get more of a full-time role, Um but that's really about it. Um, you know, you're probably looking at a four group of uh, Keller, Schmaltz, Hayton, uh, Kraus, Cooley, Gunter, uh, Mazzelli, Bukestad, Doan, Stenlin, McBain, Kerfoot. Like most of those guys were all there last year. The blue lines greatly improved. Like I said, you're probably looking at Sergachev and Dersey, Valimaki, Marino, uh, and Cole Kesselring. Uh, and then, of course, you still got Ingram and Vemalka between the pipes. So is this team going to take a massive step forward? I don't know about that. They're definitely greatly improved, though. Uh, this team's blue line is drastically better. Uh, they still have a lot of the same youth in the forward group, same goaltenders, but I'm giving Bill Armstrong an A. I really think that this is what this team needed. Um, you know, it's unfortunate it couldn't happen in Arizona, but they made some aggressive trades. I love the returns that they, you know, the good value, the great, great choices for the players they brought in, and they didn't give up too much. I thought they were fair trades. The signings were more than fine. Uh, they drafted well. You know, all in all, this team is definitely going to be better. Can they make the playoffs next year? That's going to be a tall task, but I, at the very least, think they can be in the mix for the wild card spots. Uh, we'll see how they make out, but. I think this team is going to be really fun to watch. Like I said, you're going to see guys like Cooley and Gunter and Doan and Keller and Michelli. Um, You know, there's lots lots there to like up front. Uh, lots to like. And I do wonder if they're going to name a team captain. Some speculation it could be Clayton Keller. We'll see if that turns out to be true. Maybe it'll be announced around the time of training camp or around the beginning of the season. Hard to say, but like you can see that this group needed a change. And they got it. And the GM executed extremely well with the new infusion of cash to get this team ready for their inaugural season as the team from Utah. Obviously, we don't have a team name yet. Hopefully, we'll know the name in the not too distant future. I know we're not going to have, uh, you know, logos or jerseys or anything like that for them this season. But at the end of the day, um, you know, they might have a basic jersey, but they're not going to be a basic team. This is going to be a really fun team on the ice, and I'm curious to see what the team name works out to be. Maybe it'd be the Utah Yeti, which is a name I've kind of been fond of myself. So we'll see. Let me know your thoughts on the work of Bill Armstrong and Team Utah in their first offseason. Um, what do you think of my grade? What do you think of their moves? Let me know in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time. 